Hello, everybody, and welcome to Teach a Kid to Read, the podcast about caring for children in the area of literacy, where we believe that there's no such thing as an illiterate child. There's only children who haven't found an adult who cares enough to teach them to read yet. And uh, we, we exist to release a million volunteers, hopefully, into under-resourced classrooms to transform a generation of kids. And uh, my name's Tony, and I'm here with Jeff Martin, who uh, is the uh, director of the Children's Literacy Project. He is also the executive producer of Exciting New Film that is the backdrop of Teach a Kid to Read, a film called Sentenced, a documentary on illiteracy and how it impacts adults so that we can understand the need to teach children. Jeff, welcome to the show. Glad to be at the show, of course. This is great. So, uh, Jeff, you, uh, you've produced, you're the brain behind this new documentary called Sentenced, and we should probably just let the audience know that I was also the writer on the film, so when we talk about it, it's really talking about something we both love an awful lot, and so there may be times that Jeff tosses the ball back to me a little bit, but um, kind of talk through the genesis of, of Sentenced, the documentary on, um, on illiteracy and, and how it came about. Can you tell us kind of the genesis story? Sure. Um, well, I've spent... I spent about a decade active uh, in the cause of activating uh, volunteerism into public schools, so most at-risk public schools around the country. I'm involved in an organization that, that we made a film. That film got disseminated throughout the country through various partners. And, and this is a different film. This is not sentenced. Yes. Yeah, it's a different film. It was about, it was a decade over. I think we finished it in 2010. And we watched what happened when an a film on an important topic, you know, hits the culture the right way. Right. And, and during that time, we spent a lot of time in at-risk inner city schools and, and schools around the country that were challenged and, and discovered that, you know, Title I schools aren't over and only in the hills of Appalachia and the inner city of Chicago. Title I schools are a few miles from my house and I live in one of the most prestigious towns in, the, in Oregon and, and I can drive eight minutes and be at a title one school. So there's a lot of need out there. And we discovered that kids in school aren't learning to read. And we literally pivoted to the cause of literacy. And we haven't done anything in the last few years that didn't start with a feature documentary film. So I guess as filmmakers, we see the story, but as responsible citizens, we see that you don't just make a film and leave the project hanging. So we we dive in and we we create our nonprofit and we focus and we just try to end up having a huge impact with the films that we make. And we adopted literacy when we saw that it wasn't being addressed. Jeff, let me ask you sort of a cynical question. Um, I think a lot of people, maybe a lot of people listening to our podcast today, uh, they see films, documentary films as vanity projects. They're, they're people spend a lot of money to go film things they want to film. And, uh, in the end, yeah, there's entertainment value to it, but, um, but as far as real transformation, it doesn't really happen. How would you respond to that in regards to your filmmaking? <laughs> well, I'm interested, I'm interested in, uh, kind of what I would call kingdom work and, and justice and I don't, I don't have a, I don't, I mean, I would love to do a documentary on Buddy Holly if somebody would asked me to, <laughs> but we made, but, but what's put in front of me, what's give, been given to me are ideas that are transformative. And in a way we kind of do sociological studies of situations and I have a background in sociology and I had a keen interest in it in college and it just became natural for me to gravitate towards making a difference. And, and that, that's what we do. That and, and out. two of your previous films made it to the white house and actually affected policy. And you've actually, actually put volunteers yeah. into places where they were needed and you've actually seen schools change. It's not just a vanity project. It actually has impact. I had a friend one time tell me that my problem was that I, you know, you really need to make a films that like make a difference and where you can measure the success. And he described how, you know, you know, people show my film and they raise like 5,000 bucks when they show my film. And that's, you know, exciting. And I, and I think that that's great, but I went like, well, we had something like 10 to 20,000 churches adopt public schools uh, with one of our films. And, 
the largest restoration project in, in the history of the world down on the Klamath River is starting in 2023 as a result of the Obama administration seeing our film. So I love the doing impact work. And I tell you, I'm the worst film distributor in the world when it comes to being successful, you know, in that broad, exciting Academy Award way. But we've, right. we've had a lot of luck having an impact with our films. I don't that's know. Great. That's what's been, that's that's the that's what we were given. So that's what we do. Your new film, Sentenced, is uh, is on the issue of literacy. And again, you've you've touched on several topics over your career uh, mm. as a filmmaker and as a, a nonprofit worker, do gooder in the world. <laughs> um, I'm just going to read this. Uh, the Sentenced documentary is a vulnerable and immersive exploration on the epidemic of childhood illiteracy. A braided series of character-driven stories from the point of view of ethnically diverse adults and their families who have never learned to read. Mm -hmm. A forceful yet tender tale of how illiteracy fuels the cycle, the cycles of generational poverty. Yeah. How did you come to fall in love with this issue or this to become your passion? Well, it's pretty simple. When I was out there doing the work in, in what became known as church school partnerships, where we were, we were showing churches how to enter into the public space in ways that were welcome and conformed with church and state and were appropriate ways to um, partner and serve into public schools. We, I, I was invited to Memphis where we made a small film and I met these wonderful principals and pastors and educators and activists who were coming together in their city around the cause of literacy. And I, I kind of knew we had run our course in this faith school partnership space. Some people were doing it really well. They were, they were, they were, they were surpassing us in their ability to help others get started. And to this day, I send people to them routinely who call us and, and need and want support or want ideas. And I just say, really, you need to work with School Connect in Phoenix. They're the best. And we pivoted. We saw literacy. And in fairness to the, our audience, I talked to you about it. We just agreed that that this is the this is the next thing for us is right. to do literacy. And in that Memphis film, I had I had people in in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, hug me after watching a short. I've never anybody watch a short film and hug me. And this guy hugged me and said, thank you for what you're doing. And to me, it was just a, a goosebump moment where I knew ah, I'm doing literacy. I'm, 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 I'm getting old. I'm going to do something that really is going to going to have a huge impact on a lot of people. And we're going to we're going to impact literacy in our country. And uh, we're discovering right now what kind of impact that might be now that we have a, a, a finished film that we can show and we can use. The documentary is called Sentenced, and Jeff, I understand you've got a treat for us. You're going to give us a sneak peek of the teaser for the film. This is an unreleased film at this point, but we're going to go ahead and show that right now. If um, if you're listening to a podcast, you can go to sentencedfilm.com, and there you can see, as of today, you can see the teaser for the film, but we're going to watch it here, uh, a quick sneak peek of the film Sentenced. I don't know what S-A-K-E-O. Skill? I really don't know what it says. My wife texts me, what's I-I-I? That is a I-I-I right? with the little dash thing. I, I don't know how to say that. Kindergarten first, second, it begins there. And slowly and slowly we begin to lose you. The stakes are high. The stakes is life and death. You can't teach yourself how to read if you don't know how to read. It's been a total of nine years in prison. He has a knife, and then we didn't go to school. I what? can't afford a dentist. Mm. Oh, I was devastated. Don't know how to spell it, but yeah. I only graduated from the sixth grade. He's going to be the same issues like me. I hope and I pray to God he's better than me. She's falling behind and started reading. She had to repeat the first grade for the second time. 
Because my teacher gives me a hardwood bag of dough. How can I make a difference in my community? How can I keep them out of prison? How can I break this generational poverty? It's easier to build strong children than repair broken men. We have a chance to actually change a broken system. <laughs> okay. Um... Well, I, I've, I've seen it a dozen times and I got chills again. Um, yeah, me too. How did it affect you, Jeff? Well, I, you know, it's a, such a long journey to make a documentary film. This is, this is my fourth and I've tried to do five others and everything about it starts with a, with a, you know, having an idea, talking to your next closest person and starting a life, what becomes a life journey that is really no different than going to college I mean, it's not like getting your master's. It's like going to college. You enter in sort of dumb. You 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 start and then you discover it. And then you go, oh my gosh, we've got to do something different. We've got to meet a new person. We're, you know, we've got to find money. You oh my gosh, COVID has got to shut us down. You know. So by the time you're by the time you're done, you're exhausted. You're glad to be done. And you kind of forget the importance of your work until you start watching audiences respond and things happen. Like we didn't know if four dams on the Klamath River were going to come down when we finished the film. But then. And that film was called? Uh, A River Between Us. A River Between Us. People want to see that one. Yeah. And um, we didn't know that we literally made the film undivided, not knowing who we were going to show it to ever. Right. And because of the experience of Undivided, not necessarily the other film, um, we kind of knew we had a starting point, but we entered into the space of literacy that is a giant industry. And we didn't know if they will even like this film or embrace this film. A giant industry that has resulted in one one in five American adults cannot read well enough to get a job. Right. And they would never and they would never make a film. Bless their hearts. I love they're my friends. Yeah, I, I admire great. them immensely. I've got people. I got a woman in, in Memphis who calls me her BFF, who we've we've actually never shaken hands hmm. uh, because I admire her so much. But she would never make a film where she called out her industry. And and. And somebody needs to tell America that one in five Americans don't read well enough to get a job, that there are 43 million Americans that can't read. And we it's we don't need to feel shame. We need to feel resolve and go like, OK, right. we can we can go all around the world and and spend write checks during COVID. And we can do all this stuff and we can't teach our kids to read. Right. What? What? And. And it's not that everyone's not trying like we we are big supporters of the entire the entire industry and what they're trying to do. And um, it's like you told me when you first presented this project, you said, Tony, I'm a I'm a filmmaker and I can this is this is the thing that I can do. This is my superpower that I can bring to this issue. Mm -hmm. And hopefully everyone will be able to use, you know, my superpower or I can use it for the good of everyone. And so. Um, my understanding is your your goal long term is to give this film away in the sense of make sure everyone uses it who can use it. Yeah, I, I, I we presented the film at a film festival in Indianapolis. And one of the weirdest questions was this, this woman said to me, why did you do this? Why did you make this film? And I said to her, well, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a believer person. I'm a faith person and a and, and a friend. A friend said to me one time, give to what is given to you. And this idea was given to me. And so I gave to it. And we're, as Tony said, we're a filmmaker. We're filmmakers. And, and that's how we start. And so we decided to find out whether we could raise the money and find out whether there was enough of a story and could we assemble a team. And in the end, we made the film as a gift to the literacy, to the cause of literacy, 
I think if you watch the film, you'll you'll see nothing but empathy for public school teachers. They are given an impossible task. Um, they cannot be held responsible. For one of the persons I raised money from gave five hundred dollars to the film reluctantly and said, why aren't teachers teaching the kids to read? I said, well, watch the movie. You will you will figure out. Uh, you will figure right. that out very quickly why why teachers can't be held responsible for this challenge. Um, and so I guess we just made the film because it was put on our hearts and we're filmmakers and we're impact filmmakers. We're not we're not glamorous documentarians. We're impact filmmakers, justice filmmakers. So we did it. Um, before we wrap up, I just, I have a couple more questions. One is what, what's your hope for the film as far as like, uh, it's, it's done now. It's not, it hasn't been released. So people can see the teaser. They can't see the film itself. What's your hope over the next year and what's give, give us a hopeful version of that. Let's start there. Yeah. Well, you know, the, uh, as I've said it, and I said a small event recently, the f documentary films find their audience. And we're in the process right now of helping that film find its audience. As I said earlier, we didn't know if people in the literacy world would embrace this film because we know they would never make it. They would never spend a half million dollars and plus all the free. That, that's, that was towards the production. Uh, we have lots, lots of unpaid support right. for the film. Uh, so let's say a million dollars. They'd never spend a million dollars making a film. And they'd never spend five years doing it and allowing themselves to do it like filmmakers. And so, but in the end, we didn't know whether they'd embrace the film. And we have now had in really just this week, it's the, it's the second week of February. And just this week, we've had two very significant literacy organizations, uh, net highly networked go, Oh my gosh, you did, you know, you've captured the story. Great. So we only learned this week, we've been doing the project for five years and we only learned this week that we've made a film that we can't anticipate being embraced by the literacy movement. And that's amazing. So to start with, we're helping the film find its audience. Ultimately, we would love to have broad streaming distribution. I'm sure we will. All yeah. the other films have, but you, you don't, you don't start there. You start by building the 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 rumble underneath the volcano and we're in the we're in the rumble stage right now we're going to new york to another festival uh in a month where a lot of people are coming justice film festival if you're in new york city area mm -hmm. march 3rd march 2nd march 2nd uh, down down on bleaker street uh you can we'll, we'll help you find that reach out to us and so that's my hope is that the that the film catches fire and that in the end we're back at the White House going, this this needs to change. You know, not only do these those four dams need to come down and not only is it OK for schools to partner churches to partner in public schools, but America should not be trailing the world in early childhood literacy. We should every kid in this country should be reading by the time they're in fourth grade. And it's ridiculous that they are not. It's great. And then. Uh, you kind of got into it there a little bit. Could you just expand a little bit on on the impact you hope, or what what is what do you hope the film catalyzes? Yeah, well, uh, I think the public doesn't get it to start with. I think the public has heard about literacy, and I literally know that there are products out there. You can type in the word like literacy products, and it'll be like ABCs for homeschool kids, and you know, little books and products you can buy, and literacy. And I even talked to somebody in a major major publisher one time, and they said, "Well, our the, our literacy program is this. We love we have level one, level two, level three, level four books, and we provide those to families so they can teach their kid to read." Well, guess what? Those parents would teach their kids to read if all they had was wet sand and a finger. They would they would spell out the ABCs and teach their kids the sounds. Those families do not have literacy problem. The literacy problem coexists with poverty. And generation, and typically generational poverty. So families who don't know how to read now are raising kids that don't won't know how to read later. And so we need to intervene in the lives of those families and give and give them the support they need, and give their teachers who try to teach those children the support. It's cross, it's cross cultural, it's rural, it's urban, it's all races, it's all genders, it's and it's little and it's little kids. And the easiest thing you can do. If you can't figure out what else to do, volunteer to be a reading buddy somewhere and, and teach a kid to read website 
um, which is teachakidtoread.com, is will will direct you to just the easiest, closest thing you can do. And and if and you know that's our goal is to to activate the public to help and to change the way America sees the problem. From your mouth to the country's ears, I hope, Jeff, and I, I, I just wish good things for you, and that, and that it does have that impact. Before we go, anything, anything you'd like to say you haven't had a chance to say? No, I, I would. Yeah, I mean, no, and then I, there I, I talk. The, <laughs> uh, the, the filmmakers deserve the credit. I mean, I, I would not have made a film like Sentenced. I, I wrote and directed the last documentary we did. And it was full of really smart people. And we proved that those smart people were smart by showing pictures uh, of what they were talking about. And we made them all look good. And it was very safe film because everybody else's voice was the important voice. This film is a deep dive into generational poverty. And you saw it in the trailer. You met the characters in the trailer. Well, we lived with those people for months. And the filmmakers convinced us that it was not a film where we ought to let the experts talk. And there's nothing, I'm not mad at the experts, but the experts are having a hard time changing the country. So let the people themselves tell their own story. And that's what Sentence is about. And I get, I credit Mark Allen Johnson and Connor Martin, who's my son, and the writers, Tony and Jim, who supported those guys the whole way to make sure it was a smart, put well put together film that could reach the most people. And so while I, you know, I get to sit in the, in the boss's seat and pretend it's about me, it's not. There's wonderful work done by other people. And there's going to be a lot more people that are going to make it happen. Our friends in New York City, our friends in Washington, D.C., our friends in Seattle, Memphis, Indianapolis, just as a start. The film's not even released. Only a few people have seen it. And these people are responding and their work will end up being the work. So... That's Jeff Martin with the Children's Literacy Project and also the Sentence Film Project. Uh, check out at sentencefilm.com. Go to teachakidtoread.com and start to learn how you can impact a, a kid in your neighborhood. We, uh, The world has changed one person at a time, one relationship at a time. Uh, Harvard study said the most transformational thing that could happen in the life of a child is one healthy, caring adult to enter their life and to speak hope into them. And so... That's what that's what Jeff's about. And that's what this is about. Remember, there's no such thing as illiterate children. There's only kids who haven't met an adult who cares enough to help them read. So this is Teach a Kid to Read and have a wonderful day. Teach a child to read. Give a child a chance. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm.